Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to this next guitar lesson. For today, I have a really cool little gospel slash um, jazz progression to show you guys. It's got some really nice sounding shapes, and it's just a really cool move to use in your playing. So I'll show you the shapes that we're using, and then also uh, how to actually use this in some other keys and stuff like that. So let's get into the lesson, and I'll break this all down for you. Okay guys, so to start off, we are in the key of G major, and we're starting at the three chord, so the B minor. So we're starting with a minor 11 shape, and this is one that you're going to want to remember. This is a useful voicing. I use this one a lot, um, and not just when I'm playing jazz. So we're going to have middle, low E, 7th fret. That's going to lightly touch the A and mute it. Ring finger, D, 7th fret. Pinky, G, 7th fret. Pointer, B, 5th fret. Okay, and I'm going to hybrid pick this, so I'm going to pick the low E, then D, G, and B are going to be played with my middle, ring, and pinky, but you could also strum this. And the pointer on my left hand fretting hand is also going to be muting the high E string. So here's the chord we get. Very nice chord. Let's take that up to E at the 12th fret, A at the 5th fret, then B at the 7th fret. Okay, very nice sound. So that's our first chord, minor 11. Okay, and that'll, you can substitute that out whenever you see a minor chord. So if you saw like E minor 7 or something like that, you could put that in there and it would sound awesome. Okay, the next chord after that is going to be a Lydian dominant chord. This is going to be an easy chord to get to from right here. It's also going to be considered a dominant 7 with a sharp 11 or sharp 4. Okay, so, or flat 5 actually I should say as well. So a couple different things you could call it. I'm going to be calling it uh, for today's lesson a dominant 7 sharp 11. So we have this right here. Now all we're going to do is take our middle and ring fingers and move them one fret towards the tuners. So we have this. Now the middle and ring are at the sixth fret of the low E and D. There's a chord we get. So for right now this is a progression. sound because those top two notes stay the same. Okay, now we're just going to go down to the fifth fret and play the exact same thing. Okay, so, so that's what we're playing. So now we go down to the fifth fret, start with our minor 11 voicing once again. Go down to our dominant 7 sharp 11 shape. Okay. So that A minor is going to be at the 5th fret, then we're going to move that middle and the ring to the 4th fret, keep the other two fingers the same, the pinky and the pointer. Okay, so from there what we have is this. Okay, now obviously you can hear that needs to resolve, so we're going to resolve it to a G major 13. Here's our chord that I'm using for this. Pointer at low E, 3rd fret, that mutes the A. Middle is going to the 4th fret of the D, ring, 4th fret of the G, pinky, 5th fret of the B. Then we can also bar our pinky at the 5th fret of the high E and get the 9th up there. Very nice sound. Okay, so all together we have this. play a little slower if you want, maybe pick the notes. And you get a good, just really nice sounding progression there. Okay, so that starts from the third note of whatever key you're in, if you want to think of it just really simply. So like, let's say we're in the key of, uh, of B flat. Okay, so two flats. The third note of B flat is a D, so we're just going to put that minor 11 voice in there and play that little progression. So we get this. Okay, so um, that's kind of how that progression works. So it starts off the three minor in any key. 
let's maybe say that we're in the key of A flat, so four flats. So we'll start from the third note, which is C, and then do our little progression. Okay, one more time. And we get our progression. So um, yeah, that's, that's the sound. Again, it's a really cool, nice sound. Really three main voicings in there. Um, but yeah, it's just a cool move, and like I said, I've heard a lot of really good gospel players use this move in their playing, so I kind of wanted to show you guys and uh, just show you how, how you might use it in your own playing if you're just you know, playing through a couple chords or something like that or working on putting some progressions together. Um, so yeah, that's the sound. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you all back here next week for the next lesson. Thanks so much, everyone.